Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today's topic is from the Department of A&D. Uh, today's uh, topic is complication of chronic superactive otitis media. Uh, myself, Dr. Anand Navnathulapri, Assistant Professor, Department of A&D, Prabhara Medical College, Lone. So, we all covered actually anatomy, and uh, all the uh, previously we covered anatomy of middle ear, anatomy of of external ear and inner ear and uh, we also covered the CS1 topic so we are concentrating today's topic is only, only on the complication of the otitis media so what is otitis media is as otitis media is an inflammation of part of or all of the mucoperiosteal lining of the tympanum mustard compartment compartment is in the ischial tube, tympanic cavity, mustard antrum only material spaces of temporal bone complication of otitis media have been defined as a spread of the infection beyond the confines of the lining of mucosa of the middle ear cleft so both an acute and chronic uh, otitis media can cause complications what are the different factors which cause influencing the development of the complications First is the age. Mostly this found, complication found in the first decade or only in the old age because it's poor immunity, poor socioeconomic groups, then uh, virulence of the organisms, then immunocompromised host like uh, uh, HIV patients, uncontrolled diabetes, patients on immuno, immunosuppressive drugs, anti-cancer drugs, patients taking long-term steroids. Uh, there are some preformed pathways which causes the development of complication and lastly is the cholestatoma. So what are the pathways of spread of infection? First most commonly direct bone erosion. In acute infection it is process of hypermic decalcification. In chronic infection it mostly due to the osteitis or erosion by the cholestatoma or granulation tissue. Second is venous thrombofibrillitis. As you know, veins of the Harvison canals are connected with the dural veins, which in turn connect with dural venous sinuses and supervision veins of the brain. Thus, infection from the mustard bone can cause thrombofibrillitis venous sinuses, even cortical vein. That we can show this in this. This dural is interconnected to the dural veins and the cortical veins. What are different preformed pathways? Congenital dehiscence that is in the bony facial canal, floor of the middle ear, over the jugular bulb. Congenital dural defect, aberrant arachnoid granulations or meaning in sepulocils. Patent sutures that is petrosquamous sutures. Previous skull fractures, fractures sight heals only by the fibrous scar which permit the infections. Surgical defects like stepy surgery, stepidectomy, penetration operation, mastectomy with exposure of the dura. Then oval window and round windows. Infection from the labyrinth can travel along the internal acoustic meatus, aqueduct of the vestibule or that of the cochlea to the meninges. These are preform pathways which causes infection and complications. So what are different classification we generally do? Classification of this complication in two subgroups. This is intratemporal, that is within the confines of the temporal bone, and intracranial. So, what are intratemporal? Most these are mastoiditis, petrocytis, facial paralysis, labyrinthine fistula, and the labyrinthitis. And what are intracranial? These are extradural abscess, subdural abscess, meningitis, brain abscesses, lateral sinus thrombofibrillitis, and otitic hydrocephalus. Thus, what are sequelae of the otitis media? There are direct result of the middle ear infection should be differentiated from the complication. These are not complete, these are sequelae which causes the otitis media. They include ossicular erosion, atelectasis or adagio otitis media, tympanous sclerosis, cholestatoformation, formation, conditive hearing loss due to ossicular erosion or fixation, sensory hearing loss, speech impairment and learning disability. 
last two are secondary to the loss of hearing in the development the phase of the infant or the child so what is mastoiditis what is <coughs> no first is acute mastoiditis infection spreads from the mucosa lining to the mustard of the ear cell then mustard ear cells system to involve bony walls of the mustard ear cell system there are different mustard ear cells which present there are mustard ear cells in the most commonly is antrum or mustard antrum then along the zygomatic bone along the labyrinth labyrinth and then different <coughs> same circular canals along same circular canals along the sigmoid bone along facial this is perifacial perisigmoid different mustard ear cells are present so this infection spread from that bone what so what is etiology etiology follows the acute, acute separatis otitis media seen in the mustard with well developed ear cell system mostly children are affected in this condition most common cause organism is beta hemolytic streptococcus so what is pathology mostly production of the pus under tension there is hypermic decalcification and osteoclastic re resorption of the bony walls so what are symptoms symptoms is consist of mainly triads of symptoms and of acute mastoiditis are mostly otalgias eric post auricular pain and fever otorrhea and hearing loss are less frequently reported in this case so what are the signs signs are we can see mustard tenderness post auricular swelling ear discharge ear discharge may be mucoperiodontal or duperiodontal like most common in this is pulsatile discharge is present it, it is light it is called also called a lighthouse sound sign then this is uh, sagging of the posterior meatal wall then perforation of tympanic membrane swelling over the mastoid due to typical appearance of the mastoid ear cells uh, mastoid in posterior meatal is called as a iron out uh, hearing loss is conductive type patient mostly feel ill and toxic with low grade fevers So what are uh, investigations? Mostly blood counts. We see uh, polymorphic leukocytosis. Uh, ESR is raised. We do mostly X-ray mastoid. Then we can see there is clouding of the ear cells due to collection of the exudate in the or pus in the mastoid cells. We mastoid shoulder views we take in this uh, for uh, pus culture or ESR for culture and sensitivity. CT scans. So. it are said it's a temporal one we can do to to study the choice detect the coilous mastoiditis which is kind of a loss of any bony trabeculae may also it find any occult second complications such as intracranial or other neck abscesses so you can see so what are differential diagnosis of the acute mastoiditis or posterior lesion mostly separation of the mustard periorical posterior uh, lymph nodes pericolis of the meatus and infected sebaceous cyst because pinna is forwardly placed in both condition but uh, trigal tenderness is mostly present in the front place of the meatus we uh, we can uh, check the uh, mustard tenderness uh, by three finger test we can uh, keep your fingers on the uh, root of the zygoma then uh, Mid, uh, mastoid tip and middle of the mastoid process or we, and in mostly in the simba conchi there is we uh, tenderness also we can check but trigal tenderness mostly seen in the pharyngeus of the meatus so what is treatment what are treatment mostly consider you can hospitalize the patient then uh, after culture sensitivity or we can start antibiotics mostly amoxicillin ampicillin specific antimastoiditis of the sensitivity mostly augmenting we can start or since anemia can often present chloroplast or metro we can add um uh, marangotomy when pus is under tension and it is relieved by the wide marangotomy early cases of acute mastoiditis respond to the conservative treatment with antibiotics alone and combined with marangotomy but what is marangotomy you can just take a incision on the tympanic membrane and pus under tension we can relieve by this and most and surgical management of this mastoiditis mostly is cortical mustard oil it is indicated when there is subperiosteal abscess sagging of the posterior meatal wall 
posterior reservoir sign is present. Because what is posterior reservoir sign? Whenever we mop the air discharge, it comes out every time. This is posterior reservoir sign. No changes in the condition of patient or it worsen in spite of the adequate medical treatment for 48 hours. Mastoiditis leading to the complication that is facial paralysis, labyrinthitis or the intracranial complication. So what is the aim of cortical mastoidum? Is to extend it all the mastoidal cells and remove any pocket of the pus. Adequate it. In spite of that, after that, we can give antibiotics at least 5 to 7 days following the mastoidum. What are the complications of the acquired mastoiditis? Mostly subperiosteal abscess, labyrinthitis, extradural abscess, subdural abscess, meningitis, brain abscess, lateral sinusoidal pebblitis, or otitis centrosepalysis. So, what are the different abscesses in relation to the mustard infections? 50% of the patients of mustard develop subperiosteal abscess, forms as a result of either direct destruction of the cortical bone or hematogenous spread through small vascular channels. Well, pneumatized mustard cells believed to be more susceptible. Most common site is break in the my body trabecular and macuan triangles. post abscess. Most commonest abscess is post abscess. In this condition, pina is displaced forward, outward, and downward. In infants and children, abscess form over the mac one triangles. Pus in this case travels along the vascular channel in the lamina cribrosa. Uh, second is zygomatic abscess. Infection of the zygomatic cells situated at the posterior root of the zygoma. Swelling appears in front of and above the pinna. There is associated with edema of upper eyelid. Pus collects either either superficial or deep. To the diagonal cell. Uh, third is basal abscess. Following acute collis and mastoiditis, when pus breaks through the thin medial side of the tip of the mastoid and presents as a swelling in the upper part of the neck, it's along the sternocleidomastoid. Abscess is light deep to sternocleidomastoid, pushing the muscles outward. Then lux abscess, or this is also called as a metal abscess. Pus breaks through the bony wall between the antrum and the external. Uh, External auditory canal or meatus. Swelling is seen deep part of the bony meatus. Abscess may burst into the uh, meatus. Then the is abscess or behind the mastoid. Abscess is found behind the mastoid toward the occipital bone. Some of other considered abscess in the, of the digastric triangle, which is formed out tracking of the pus from the mastoid tip and follow the posterior belly of digastric and present as a swelling between the tip of the mastoid and angle of jaw. Then parapharyngeal and retropharyngeal abscess. This result from the infection of peritibial cells due to acute coalescent mastoiditis. You can see subperiodic abscesses. So what is diagnosis? We can do HRC temporal bone for detection of subperiodic abscess and delineation of the full extent of disease. So what is treatment of this abscess? Mostly in general, can be managed by anti intravenous antibiotics with maritime alone. Treatment generally requires more ag so aggressive surgical intervention. A simple mustard is first performed to allow drain of and ventilation of the mustard space. post incision can be provided access to other areas that require drainage. Drainage of neck abscess through a separate incision and putting a drain in dependent part. Culture directed oral antibiotics should be given at least for the two days postoperatively. It, what is mast or latent mustarditis? It is a slow destruction of the mustard ale cells but without the acute signs and symptoms. No pain, no air discharge, no fever, no mustard swelling. Mustard tummy may also ex extensive destruction of the air cells with granulation tissue and direct gelatinous material filling the mustard. So what is etiology? Results from the inadvertent antibiotic therapy in terms of dose, frequency and duration of administration. Most often, it results from use of oral penicillin given in cases of acute otitis media when acute symptoms subside but smoldering the infection continues in the mustoid. What a clinical feature? Uh, patient is often a child, not entirely feeling well, 
with mild pain behind the ear but with persistent hearing loss. Tympanic membrane appears thick with loss of translucency. Slight tenderness may be elicited over the mastoid. Automatically shows the conduct hearing loss of variable degree. X-ray mustard will reveal clouding of ASS or loss of cell outline. So what is treatment of latent mastoiditis? Mostly cortical mastoidotomy with full doses of antis is the treatment of choice. Is petrocytis. It is spread of the infection from the middle ear and the mastoid to the petrous part of the temporal bone is called as the petrocytis. As we know, temporal bone is divided into uh, different parts. It is squamous part, temporal part, and uh, petrous part, mustard tip, mustard process. So it is part of the temporal bone. It is petrous part of the temporal bone, which causes the, it is also called petrous apex. It, it is also called the petrous apicitis. So what is pathology? Most common pneumatizing of pet, as Petrous apex occurs only in 30% of the cases with cell extending from the middle ear or mastoid to the petrous apex. As you know, uh, the temporal bone can be well pneumatized, diploic, or sclerotic, but in, uh, in petrous apex, mostly they are pneumatized only in 30% cases. So, what are two cell tracts which can be recognized? There are both two cell tracts, posterior superior tract and the anterior inferior tract. So, posterior uh, superior tract, we start in the mastoid, runs behind and above the bony labyrinth to the petrous apex. Some cells even pass through the arch of the superior semicircular canal to reach the apex. Anterior inferior tract, we start from the hypotympendum So what are the infective procedures and along these cell tracks and reaches to the petrous apex. So what are pathologic processes similar to the coalescent mastoiditis. Uh, forming epidural abscess at the petrous apex you will know, mostly cranial nerve 6 and the trigeminal ganglion nerve. Uh, Sucunate class, uh, classified petrocyte in acute and chronic part due to this acute petrocytis. In majority instances, inflammation resolves without producing any symptom. If the protein of the inflammation is retained, this is called a gradient syndrome, is a classical presentation, consists of triad, external nectus palsy, this is due to sixth nerve palsy, deep citrus, uh, seated ear or retroorbital pain due to the fifth nerve involvement and persistent ear discharge. This is gradient syndrome or triad classically present in the petrous apicitis. Chronic petrocytis, in addition to the inflammatory changes, there is newborn formation and resorption. Osteotides uh, adjacent to the otic capsule, dura or veins may cause labyrinthitis, meningitis, epidural abscess and brain abscess. How will diagnose? As is requires HRCT and MRI. CT scan of temporal will show bony details of the petrous apex and the ear cell system. The one a MRI uh, helps to differentiate the diploic marrow containing the apex from fluid or pus. Uh, gallium 67 technician uh, bones can also be uh, helpful showing increased radioactive uptake in the affected site. You can see. So what is treatment? Uh, mainly IV antibiotics and surgical drainage. The objective of the surgery is to provide adequate drainage from the superior focus in the petrous without damage to the either facial nerve or the labyrinth. There are severe, uh, several viable surgical approaches to the petrous apex, all of which includes preliminary complete uh, simple mustard timing with skeleton of the semicircular canal. Primary factors that determine the surgical drainage roots of petrous apex are location of the infection, limitation of the temporal bone, status of hearing. In abscess of hearing, a trans labyrinthine approach offered excellent exposure to the entire posterior portion of the petrous apex. In more anterior exposure is required, then trans approach should be considered. If anterior drainage is necessary in a patient with hearing, either subtemporal or an infracochlear approach can be considered. The infracochlear approach provides very narrow window of the assess as compared to the subtemporal, but also provides a route of sustained and gravity dependent drainage. 
posterior appendicitis can be approached and drained via retrolabyrinth or sub arbida root both approaches will provide adequate assist alveolar assist in well nematized bone as well as along both the drainages then next is facial paralysis or facial palsy facial nerve palsy paralysis may be as a complication either acute duodenal media or chronic superior duodenal media roots of periodontal infection to the facial nerve are via natural descent or in the fallopian canal or most often in the tympanic segment via natural pathways such as canal from the uh, stapedius muscle neurovascular connection or mastoidis in, in contact with the fallopian canal or via direct infection of bone around the fallopian canal following acute duodenal media within the first 10 days of acute duodenal media as edema of the nerve within the fallopian canal similar to the bell's palsy complete recovery from facial paralysis may be expected with conservative treatment facial paralysis seen beyond 2 weeks of infection should be assumed to be result of erosion of the ossicles osseous facial canal with exposure of the nerve to the advancing superation following chronic superior duodenal media cholestatomy should be suspected osteitis and sub subsequent bone erosion likely exposed the nerve to infection the result of is inflammation and ultimately facial nerve compression the epidermal lining of the cholestatum may act as a protective covering for the nerve as a bone is beyond destroyed destroyed there is a hausman back back house brackman facial nerve grading which is uh, graded in the six from normal side dysfunction moderate dysfunction moderate severe dysfunction severe dysfunction total paralysis we can cover this facial paralysis uh, in separate topic in facial nerve and facial paralysis we can see here is erosion of the uh, facial canal due to cholestatoma diagnosis is high resolution uh, temporal one ct scan is essential in the evaluation of the facial nerve palsy associated with the otitis media elective testing of nerve function is really required we, we, we can assess this uh, facial palsy mostly by the hsc temporal bone treatment are antibodies with prompt surgical inhalation in incomplete paralysis associated with protected uh, acute otitis media iv antibodies wild field marangotomy tympanostomy to and place it may be adequate for in aso following session polystatum or from penetrating gallus tissue urgent explanation of the mustard air cells that is modified radical mustard we can done and along with the facial nerve decompression facial canal is inspected from the genital ganglia to the stylo mustard foramen that is called it facial nerve decompression if granular tissue or cholesterol has entered the phony canal the latter is uncapped in the area of the involvement granular tissue surrounding the nerve is removed but it actually invade the nerve sheet it is left in place if nerve is destroyed by the granular tissue we can do grafting of the nerve mostly great auricular and sural nerves next complication is labyrinth and fistula thinning or erosion of the bony capsule of the labyrinth usually in horizontal or lateral semicircular canal or most common fistulas labyrinth fistula is in a lateral semicircular canal or horizontal semicircular canal what is etiology as as you know chronic superior duodenal media with cholestatoma is the most common cause neoplasm of the middle ear surgical or accidental trauma labyrinth Other clinical features: a part of membranous labyrinth is exposed and becomes sensitive to the pressure changes. Patient complains of transient vertigo induced by the pressure. As you can see, lateral semicircular fistula is there. Diagnosis: fistula test, which can perform it uh, by two ways: pressure on the tragus or by pneumatic Siegel speculum, which uh, uh, which causes vertigo on pressing the tragus. Definitive treatment. a diagnosis is by thin section of the ct scan of temporal bone with action and coronus fistula should be managed according to location size and status of hearing with the concurrent antibiotic therapy 
किन पहले मेस्टोडर्मी एंड द कॉनेल ऑन डाउन और कैनल लॉक विथ एक्सेंटेशन ऑफ द कोलेस्टेटोमा मैट्रिक्स ओवर लाइन द फिशुला कंप्रेसर डिफरेंट ट्रीटमेंट एंड वी कैन आल्सो क्लोज दिस फिशुला विद द बोन पैटी बेस सिचुएटेड फॉर फिशुला जाती है मतलब मोर देन वन सेमीसेमिकल कैनल मोस्टली कॉकलिया वेस्टिबल और इंटरल ऑडिटी कैनल इवन अटेम्प्ट रिमूव ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स ओवर लाइन लार्ज फिशुला इन वाले सिंगल सिंगल्स कैनल कैन रिज Deafness and therefore should be avoided if possible. Small fistula less than 2 mm in one of the semicircular canal can be managed more aggressively by removing collateral matrix on the fistula at the end of canal wall. A procedure modified radical mastectomy. The fistula is then repaired with a soft tissue graft, the fascia, perichondrium, a similar covering, or mostly by bony dust along with the so blood, the bony patty. We can use for that that purpose. When infection is present, management fistula should be stage. The next complication is labyrinthitis. There are two types of labyrinthitis: uh, diffuse serous labyrinthitis and diffuse suppurative labyrinthitis. So, what is diffuse serous labyrinthitis? Diffuse uh, intralabyrinthine inflammation without pus formation is a reversible condition if treated early. Etiology: mostly often it arises from the pre-existing circumscribed labyrinthitis associated with the chronic middle ear separation or cholestatoma in acute infection of the middle ear cleft inflammation spread through annular ligament and or the round window it can follow stepidermy or fenestration operation clinical features mild cases complain of vertigo nausea in severe cases vertigo is worse with marked nausea vomiting and even spontaneous or spontaneous vomiting nystagmus quick component of nystagmus toward the affected ear As the inflammation is diffuse, cochlea is also affected with some degree of sensory hearing loss. Serous labyrinthitis, if not checked, may pass into suppurative uh, labyrinthitis with total loss of vestibular and cochlear function. Treatment: Medical patient is put on bed, his head head is immobilized with affected ear above. Antibacterial therapy is given full dose to control infection. Labyrinth and sedatives that is uh, stematil or diamine, hydramine. As given symptomatic relief to what I go, but every time it is done, if labyrinthitis is followed, acute otitis media, a drum is bulging, pus is cultured for anti specific antibiotic therapy. Surgical is as usual cortical mastectomy in acute mastectomies or multiple radical mastectomy. So what is diffuse suppurative labyrinthitis? This is a diffuse pyogenic infection of the labyrinth. With the permanent loss of the vestibular and cochlear functions, etiology is follows the serious labyrinthitis, pyogenic or may entering through the pathologic or surgical fistulas. What are clinical features? Uh, severe vertigo with nausea and vomiting due to acute vestibular failure. Spontaneous stimulus will be observed with a quick component toward the healthy side. Patient is markedly toxic. There is total loss of hearing. Relief from the vertigo is seen after three to six due to adaptation. Treatment as uh, same as the serious labyrinthitis rarely. Drainage of labyrinth is required if in in problem suppression acting as source of infection. Uh, we can cover uh, the other complication. There is a temp uh, intracranial complication in the next topic. Uh, mostly uh, abscesses. Mean these are meningitis, uh, uh, abscesses, and uh, otitis hydrocephalus and and later some uh, so. sinus thrombosis in next topic so we just we covered today's intratemporal complications and intracranial complication we can discuss in the next lecture okay thank you